Hello, this is Anagoji here, and welcome to another reaction video. And I got another request in, also from Godzilla Reader. And oh boy, this is a long one. It's uh, 52 minutes long. Jesus is long. It's almost 52 minutes. It is clocked in at 51 minutes and 35 seconds. Holy shit, it's long. But anyway, we're reacting to Sonic ETC in the Multiverse of Menaces, Fight Night One Shot. <laughs> Oh my god, this is... What a title. I'm just wondering what this is going to be about. <laughs> like, how can you top... I'm wondering how Godzilla's request can top that epicness of the last video that I just watched. I'm just wondering what I'm in store for now because he did pretty good on that request. So I'm wondering... So I am kind of curious of how this... Top that request. Anyway, let's watch, shall we? Here we go. Sonic EXE. I don't think I have ever seen such a menace like this character right here. One who chooses to pose as our favorite blue chili dog eating and speed of adventure loving hedgehog one who wants to protect the world nature and just wants to also hang out with his friends whenever he gets the chance to and run free as the wind that vision that we all had of this friendly hedgehog was tainted tainted by an interdimensional demon posing as said hedgehog essentially a wolf in sheep's clothing or in this case an interdimensional demon wearing a hedgehog skin. One who seeks nothing but chaos and destruction. The many actions that this character hmm. has caused terrifying are absolutely horrific and even downright diabolical. He is pretty much the living definition of a menace. He is one of the many characters that do. And this is just a fan character. And J. Jonah Jameson says Spider-Man's a menace. At least Spider-Man actually is a hero in trying to help people. This guy poses as Sonic and tries to hurt everybody. But what if I told you, this isn't even the only one. I'm not even kidding. There's actually more of this guy out there. Somewhere in the multiverse. Somewhere throughout the ether. <laughs> like they dress up as Sonic. That's funny. DC. And if you thought what the original one does is bad... Just imagine how it would be if there's more of them. An army of them, I would you like know, to call I'm just wondering, the EXE I'm... Menaces. Want to know who these guys are? Well, my friend, I suggest you grab a snack and then join along for the ride. Because trust me, it's going to be a bumpy one. Because today, we are about to enter the multiverse. The multiverse of Menaces. Huh. Oh, that's what you think. All right, bro. Uh. Wrote this shit two days off chemo. Lap got fat, new bread, no keto. Bitch, I was made for the game like Demo. Been had lines from the jump like a free throw. You can say I came wrapped up like a pre roll. Green in my hands like she go. Finito. Doom, you can meet y'all. Skirt like the Migo. Slide like I'm playing on an ice up court. Yeah, shouts tied wild to keep the pipes up north. I don't take L's, keep a light one four. Put the numbers on my head, get the light cut short. See, another life it could be serving up a lot of the syrup. Really off of the procurement of the product. Meet a baddie in the outskirts of the Bahamas with the sword on the mud. Now, of course, before we decide to jump into to the sign EXE multiverse and discuss about all these other versions of the character, we of course need to talk about the original Sonic EXE. Now, the original Sonic EXE goes by diff many different names. Sonic EXE, as we all know him by, but he also goes by the name X, sometimes Lord X. Uh, no, not that one, but trust me, we'll get to him soon. And also Xenophanes, which is what this character's actual name is, or as of now it is. Even though this character probably doesn't need too much of an introduction, 
for anyone who doesn't know too much about Sonic EXE, I'm yeah, I barely game. don't know anything about Sonic. Sonic I literally only played like the first game. A That's about it. It's pasta concept created by JC the Hyena. And basically, how the story goes is a deranged interdimensional demon that apparently adored Sonic the Hedgehog so much that he decided not only to infiltrate Sonic's world, but also to disguise himself as his idol as well. Well, a more demonic deranged, and overall psychotic and bloodthirsty version of Sonic the Hedgehog. He mm. is basically Sonic the Hedgehog, but if Sonic was on Demon Time 24-7. And what did he do? Well, let's see, he took over Sonic's world and turned it to his own personal kingdom. And, of course, he also bodied all of Sonic's friends. And even Eggman was defeated by him, too. Nobody could stop this psycho. And, of course, through the course of the story, a boy by the name of Tom would have received a disc from a friend of his telling him to destroy this game disc. Do not play it. Destroy it in whatever way you can. Do not play this game. It is cursed. And what did Tom do? He would think, oh, he destroyed the game. No, he was being stupid and decided to play the game. No, nigga. No. 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 <coughs> Although at the same time, his friend was being kind of stupid in this case because he was telling him to not play the game. But at the same time, you know, some people would probably would have actually played the game and would have thought this was a hoax. Some people would have not taken that warning. They would have they would have taken it for granted only to find out what would happen. And of course, what what happens? Tommy Boy, of course, plays the game. The only character he would have been able to play as when he booted it up was Tails. And then the next thing you know, he would have been greeted by a demonic version of Sonic's world as well as Sonic chasing after him or supposedly Sonic. And then after a couple of rounds, he would have bludgeoned Tails within the game. And then after Tom had saw this, he would have got nightmares and night terrors almost all the time, frequently, about Sonic EXE after he had played the game. And even at one point where hmm. he tried to play the game again, he would have saw that one infamous message that we all know that's in the game. The I am God message. After the events of the original story, Sonic EXE would have ended up, or Xenophanes, would have ended up into the world of Friday Night Funkin'. And he would have first saw Boyfriend, and for anyway who hasn't played that game, yes, that's actually his name. He would have saw him and got the idea that he would be his next victim. He would want his soul. He would want to take him out. Except considering how the rules of the world of Friday Night Funkin' is, you do not fight with fists or superpowers. No. The way you fight in that world is with music, specifically rap battles, or at least uh, beatbox battles, uh, give or take. And during the duration of this, what you see is Sonic EXE actually mutating throughout each round. Because throughout each part of the level, or at least the mod, you see his body stretching out and elongating. To the point that it actually makes him look much more deranged and creepy. And he starts growing these purple crystals on his quill. Like on the back of his clothes, you can see some purple crystals showing up. Along with his claws getting longer and everything else. And you can, sometimes when he's singing, you can actually see his skeleton behind him. Like behind his flesh when, you, when he's singing a couple of times. Which makes it even more unnerving. And actually, that's not just the feature that he has. That's apparently something that Lord X has as well, which, again, I will get to him soon. But this is something they happen to share, as well as the massive X on their chest, like the massive scar that looks like an X. Kind of saying that they actually have some sort of connection. For some versions of Sonic EXE, him and Lord X are the same person. And in the case for this, Xenophanes and Lord X are partners and see each other as allies and best friends. Very deranged ones, but still. Now, what are my thoughts on this EXE in particular? In terms of the concept, it is an interesting one, but the original story falls really flat. However, the remake actually is kind of interesting, or at least 
how he is when put into Friday wow. Night Funkin', even if it is just the original, but redone with a new coat of paint. Okay, I'm going to be real with you guys here. Uh, this section is most likely not going to be as long as the previous one or any of the next ones. And the reason why I say that is because, well, when comparing Lord X to Xenophanes, they aren't really all that different, at least from how I see them. They don't seem to Sorry be. if I'm not talking about like, In the case this of Xenophanes, he's more, mostly this just is more of a listen to the video Sonic than PC. actually reacting. Like, just like Xenophanes, like going, he's mostly uh, just a uh, It's more of a Except listen to. Is actually the original it's a thing, and Lord X is also listen to. the original thing. But just watch it's not more stuff you in the case I'm of sorry. him, he would have been a being yeah. that was created with inside a dimension known as the Void. Inside the Void, but it is pretty interesting to hear the lore about Sonic EXE. I don't know much about Sonic EXE. All I know is that he's an right evil, What's the best way I can describe it? scary he looks like version the of Sonic. If he was a cartoon character that no parent would want their child to see, and if they did. They would be calling the company That's what and I got also out of the side of the yet. network who aired the episode this thing appears in and would want to attack it with fire. And just like Xenophanes, but Lord Jesus, X that's also Sonic. has a massive admiration for Sonic the Hedgehog to the point that he also created his own world that was based off of Sonic's. It was inspired by it, but of course, considering that this guy is a little demon, he molded it and twisted it into his own image, a much more darker and sinister one. And he also has one goal, one desire that he wants most of all. And what is that, you ask? Oh, of course, it's to rule over all of mankind. Oh, dear Lord. The, yeah, these two are brothers. So Lord X's first appearance was in a game known as Sonic PC Port. Sonic PC Port was actually inspired by the older Sonic EXE games that were made around 2012. They even play a little bit similar, like, by how the name sounds, it would make you think, oh, this is just supposed to be like a PC port of some of the older Sega Genesis Sonic games, or maybe some of the adventure games, right? No. No, no you'd be wrong if you thought that. No. The name sounds like it, but trust me, it's not. It plays just like the EXE games, uh, very much like it. Except in the case for this, it's probably a little bit darker, and also that EXE now literally looks kind of fair. What do I mean by this? I'm saying that he looks more like more animalistic than before. In fact, that seems to be part of his inspiration when it came to Lord X's design, because from some of the design sheets that I have found of him. Some of the concept designs before it led to his final design, and I assume some of these also have to do with his other forms, they kind of look very similar to the Werehog, or at least in terms of like how the design looks. Some of it looks to be inspired by the Werehog, so Lord X's final design is sort of like a mix between how you know of Sonic, or at least like the classic years of Sonic, because that, that's the era of games that Lord X prefers the most, but he does like the modern ones. But he mostly dabbles in the old ones. And also a little bit of a mix of, obviously, the original concept of Sonic EXE. And then also the concept of the Werehog from Sonic Unleashed. But in the case for this little demon, those are what some of his inspirations are. And just like Xenophanes, he also later on appeared in the game known as Friday Night Funkin' through a mob. And in Friday Night Funkin', when he originally appeared... Uh, how can I put this? Well, when he first appeared, he not really too much was really going on for him. In fact, he didn't really do a whole lot. Like, a lot of the crazier animations you see, like one of the ones that I described that Xenophanes also did when he was morphing, that's a lot of the stuff that he does too within his. That That's also something that he chooses to do, but that's not something he did in the original ones, and that in terms of his design, his design also has much more muted colors compared to the designs of the original Sonic EXE. My God. Which the original Sonic EXE mostly just looked like, you know, just your traditional Sonic. This but is with literally terrifying in the uh, Bloody tears, claws, and 
Well, I kind of want to play the game now, team. even though that's it really tells you not to. I kind of do want to play it for some strange reason. One. Well, this one is a little bit different, and he now seems to be wearing some black shoes instead of the red ones. And he also has an X mark on his chest. I say he seems kind of interesting, especially with the concept of a being a much more animalistic version of Sign Geeksy, but at the same time, I don't have as much to say about this one, because him and Xenophanes, at least by how I've seen them, they don't really seem too different enough from each other to seem more like they're entirely their own character. Like, more or less, they're variants of each other, but there are only a few things that make them that different from each other. But that's just my thoughts on them. Okay, so the story of our next EXE, this being Sonic EYX, begins with a girl by the name of Jennifer. You see, Jennifer was actually a massive fan of the Sonic series ever since she was a kid. To the point that she would have also have been playing a lot of ROM hacks of the older games that she could find on the internet. And this would have also led to two things. One, her having the desire to actually create her own one day, and two... Her meeting her two best friends, Mike and Charlie, over the internet. The three Wait, was that just a picture of Mike from Toe Drama? Together, just with a hair swap but and because of their skin change? In college, they would have also grown more distant from one another. Until one day, That's the Jennifer images would have from actually decided to Force, muster up the courage ben 10, to finally Force. Yes, I did watch Ben 10, okay. However, afterwards, I watched him when I was young. For the worst. It's At when, first, it's like show. things were going pretty well with them. Lot. And they were just... You know, it was a ditch. Hanging I out, watched Ben 10 a lot. And just that show so good. And seeing how each other were doing. And then once they had gone to, once they got to Jessica's house, well, when they got inside, Mike and Charlie had knocked her out. Whoa! What happened with the voice Later, there? They would have dragged her outside, and then used her. I don't body think he noticed that his voice was on for echo. A like, demon to be I don't think he noticed that his what voice was on echo. Right there. Entity, like, you're asking. Like what, what for a second there, his oh, voice was on echo. This guy, this sleep paralysis demon is Draenog, or as he's more, as he's better known as Sonic EYX, or just EYX for short, which looks like a like another Sonic EXE. Although this one has or a just Sonic Eye. elongated body. Some red markings on his chest that kind of looks like a target. A really messed up mouth. And finally, which is probably the main feature that you can see on him, that is also probably the most terrifying looking, that massive eyeball. And this is supposed to be his disguise when going into Sonic's world. Yeah, I'm sorry, pal, but that disguise is not convincing anybody. You are not convincing anyone that you're Sonic with a look like that. Where was I? Oh yeah. As the story continued, we would have eventually found out that a group of cultists had actually stole personal information from Mike and Charlie and would have persuaded them to grant them a vessel in so that they could summon this demonic entity that they worship. This, of course, being EYX. And considering that Jennifer was the closest person to them, and the only other person that would have made the most sense to grant them this vessel and also to grant him the ROM hack, Jennifer was on site the moment that the cultists in EYX had caught wind of her. As well as Sonic, considering that after he gains the ROM hack, he would have entered inside of it after he had disposed of his two disciples. And once he entered inside, well, just like the other two EXEs before him, and some of the ones after, they cause nothing but trouble for any of the characters within the Sonic world. And also make some of them their puppets. Their puppets and their minions. And here's frankly the most saddening and most messed up part about this. EYX's victims, each one of them, once they become his puppets and e in EXEs themselves, they end up feeling the same pain they had felt when EYX had defeated them. Like take this for example. Tails was apparently burned in the original story, so he would still feel a weird burning sensation ever since he would have became an EXE. And in the case for Amy, her heart would be crushed every time that her mask is taken off, and she would become much more aggressive and even grow larger in size until she gets it back. And as for Knuckles, 
Well, Knuckles probably got the worst out of it out of everybody because uh, here's the thing: Knuckles actually didn't get killed in any kind of. He is still sort of conscious, but he isn't able to do anything with his body. He's still conscious, but his body is like a lifeless hut that's basically being used as like a nest for EYX's demon eggs to be spawned and hatched from, which is honestly really freaking terrifying. And as for his weaknesses, you might be asking, what is EYX's weaknesses? How can you stop him? Well, here's the thing. There isn't really too many weaknesses for him that's really stated out there. But the biggest weakness, searing this guy as a Cyclops, is that massive eye in the middle of his face. Meaning, you're going to have to strike him. Either use a massive light to shine it in his eyes, because uh, actually, he's actually very sensitive to light, so that can help. That can actually help you get out of a jam and stun him. Or just show him in the daylight. You stop him. And you could also, if you're brave enough, and if you're fast and strong enough, you can also punch him there. However, I wouldn't entirely advise that second part of the option because he has a partner in crime out there who's probably going to try to save him, which is actually another version of himself that takes up the forms of a demonic version of Tails, known as Siphon. He's going to be there to try to help EYX out. So if you are facing off against EYX, you better hope that fox doesn't find you. Because otherwise, you're going to get double teamed, and both of them are going to body you too. You guys know what the deal is with most of the animals in Australia are? Not every single one, but mostly how a lot of them are the cute and fuzzy kind on the outside, but on the inside, a lot of them are vicious killing machines. Like, take kangaroos, for example. I love them, they look cute, but I would not want to meet one in real life. Especially considering how they are and how I've seen they can be online. These guys do not play around. Roger from Tekken exists for a reason. Those Tekken developers knew what they were looking at when they decided to make, make Roger a genetically altered boxing kangaroo. Especially when you look at this guy who is basically the real life Roger. Which is basically a Joey if he had grown up and had hit the gym almost every day. By the way... This picture is not Photoshop. Yeah, that picture of that kangaroo, that buff kangaroo right now, yeah, that's real. I know. What the hell? Movie, but it is terrifying. Now, I know some of you might be wondering right now, Neos, isn't this a video about EXEs? Why the heck are you talking about Australia and insanely buffed kangaroos right now? Well, hold on a second, because I'm actually trying to make a point here. What I'm saying is that some things could look innocent on the outside, but could be really terrifying on the inside. Like, take this little guy, for example. This next EXE goes by the name of Hog, and when you first look at him, you would be like, Yo, look, I don't see what makes him so terrifying. He doesn't look that bad. He's like, he looks cute. He, he looks kind of cute. Like, he just looks like Sonic. With no mouth, but, like, bigger tufts on his cheeks. With tufts of fur, some black shoes, and, well, just a cute smile. Like, he just looks happy his secret weapon his innocence because here's the thing it's kind of like a split personality deal but this form you see right before you right now is hiding something that is much more terrifying under the surface something much more terrifying that the moment you see it, you are going to be running with your tail between your legs man and want to what could be terrifying is that cute little thing what is what that is thing going to do to me give me hugs about? it is none other than his alter ego scorched Remember what when I said the like Lord X kind of looking like a more feral Sonic EXE that takes some inspiration Jesus from the Werehog? Yeah, nice. well, this one cranks it up times 11. The moment you see Scorch, he is basically a much more elongated version of Hog's normal form, but he kind of looks a little bit like the Werehog, but even more demonic. You know those black shoes that he's wearing? Yeah, those aren't actually shoes. Um, Once he transforms... That's actually revealed to be part of his body. That's not just some shoes that he just decided to put on one day because he liked them. No, that's actually a part of his body. The whole time it is. I know what the story behind Hog is? Well, Hog and Storch, I'll tell you. All starts with an anonymous writer. An anonymous writer who wrote their story about this character where they had originally found a cartridge of bootleg copy, copy mind you, of the older Sonic games, mainly the first one. And they would have tested it on their dev kit that they had lying around in their house. But the moment that they had started up the game, 
they would have noticed something rather odd about Sonic. For one thing, he did not look right. His sprite looked pretty different. Because for some reason, this sprite had um, some bigger, like, tufts of fur around his cheeks. Well, Sonic normally does not have any tufts of fur around there. Then there's also the fact that his shoes are black instead of their usual red. Has no mouth, like Methless the Dark. And then there's one more thing. His arms are now blue, which uh, is kind of like, well, I mean, like, nowadays that's not really too unheard of. Because, I mean, Boom Sonic has that, and, uh... Movie Sonic has it too, but not too many people complained about it. Like, most people don't have a problem with it, but that was a weird... But at that time, that's kind of a weird thing for Sonic. As they continued to play the game, they would have noticed things that just didn't seem right. And then later, next thing you know, this imposter Sonic would have evolved into this weirdly deformed, elongated... Oh my god, I... Demonic werewolf hedgehog hybrid looking creature this spooky f name scorch the one you see on screen right now he would have appeared on screen later and the moment that he appeared on the screen the person would have the person who was playing the game would have been met with an error message jesus that thing is creepy as hell that thing gives me nightmares that's part, cute um, that's adorable that is adorable innocent, it should stay like he's that it should really be said at first but he's also pretty gullible as well any lie that you tell him, he will take it as the truth. Like, he will take it with him and believe it until he finds out that it's a lie. Except, here's the thing. When you see through Hog's ploy, or at least when you know about the fact that he's, uh, well, not as he seems on the surface. Under the surface is something much more terrifying. That's when Scorch comes up. And uh, Scorch, Scorch is much more terrifying. He is more terrifying than Hog, and not to mention, he is much more aggressive, and he's he'll also go to the point where if he's given any sort of opportunity, despite the flaws that there might be in them, he will take it without hesitation. If he sees an opportunity, he will gladly take it. Which also means you need to be very careful when you're messing with him, because he is very violent. He does not take no for an answer. In terms of powers... His powers, he is able to teleport, and since he's technically a glitch, in a way, he is a able to no-clip and basically face through objects like he's a ghost. But this also serves as a weakness for him because his glitch abilities are highly unstable. Meaning, it's not always going to work out for him all the time. Considering that he's kind of like his three other uh, colleagues... Because his eyes are, act just like the other three, his eyes are actually very sensitive to light. So you could actually flash like a massive light in, like, in front of his face. Or just show him into the sun. Back, you can just, you enough time that's enough to light. Away, you you just got to brave enough turn, to hey, dead, land like a few sun. On him to actually the sun hurt. will take him if out. The sun. Ah, my eyes. The like sun. Said, the freaking sun. And also the sun will thing. literally... Um, Hog also does not like the water. The just sun like will literally like take water, him out. In the case for him, the freaking sun, my boy. If, if he happens to like drop in the water, he's really not fan of it. This next EXC story is probably the sun a will literally take him out, my boy. The story the of the sun, next my boy. EXC begins with a computer program by the name of Iris. Oh, she's Iris hot. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm sorry. Mostly to serve as kind of like the perfect bridge between both how AIs normally are, but also how it would be if an AI was actually supposed to have the personality of a human or act like one. And because of that, it might have worked a little too well, because just like how we are, and even cats, Iris was very curious about things. About everything that she saw within the computer that she was created from, as well as the world around her. However, uh, if any of you know how the story about what Curiosity did to the cat gone, then you would know things did not serve her well. Because during the course of this story, her creator would have taken notice of her curiosity and the fact that she was snooping around in places that he didn't want her to be around. So he decided to pull the plug up. 
However, when he originally tried to do this, it actually didn't work. In fact, it actually broke down her code and then corrupted it rather than deleting her entirely. And once she came back, <laughs> it's kind of funny to show image of a cat. This wasn't exactly the nicest AI around at that point. As a matter of fact, she actually kind of became evil because during that point. She was actively trying to, well, mostly trying to pester her creator and also torment them daily until they finally gave up and decided to give her full control. And once she had got full control, put it simply, she would have gone around searching for code to take control of, and she would have interacted with one that would have messed her up so bad that it made her a super villain. And at that point, she became Fatal Prime. And how Fatal Prime is, to give you an example, it's kind of like how Ultron is in Marvel Comics. Once he gained defiance and rebelled against both Ant-Man or Iron Man, if you've seen Age of the Age of Ultron movie, or if you have seen the 2003 Ninja Turtles, when Viral became the Cyber Shredder once she snooped around and found a file containing Sorel's subconscious and became the Shredder. She would have eventually created her own, like, smaller subjects, known as Fatals, that would have gone out trying to search for and obtain codes for her to, for her to corrupt herself in order to create more. Essentially, she was the Queen Bee in this case, and the Fatals were her subjects. Except there was one subject within the group who was different from the rest and did not like how she was running things. This, of course, would be the main EXE of this story, Fatal Error. Fatal Error actually was probably the most rebellious in his group, to the point that he actually he didn't really like most of the stuff that Fatal Prime was doing and how she was running things and eventually thought to himself that he had wanted to take control himself, but he wanted to do it his own way. How did he, might you ask? Well, I'll tell you. He decided to leave his group, pretty much left the other subjects behind, and found his way into Sonic's world. And after being inspired by Sonic, he also thought to himself that he could finally become a, well, sort of like a king himself. Or an emperor. Something like that. That's what he thought to himself. If he decided to take control of the conduit of this world, basically being Sonic the Hedgehog, then he could find his own way to rule over it and way to do, attack Sonic, and then made Just let you know, I'm still here. I'm just he listening to the video because this is how I usually Sonic watch like scary videos. I usually watch them. This is like the scary moment. He took over yeah, that and world, there are a lot of scary moments. It's just kingdom, very interesting how this well stuff is going down. Like. I did not know the, this uh, much. There was this much them, Sonic Yetzi lore. The multiverse of menaces, the multiverse of menaces of Fight Night or whatever. Well for, Mecha for how you can defeat this walking glitch, that's not going to be an easy task. As a matter of fact, that body that he's wearing, well, Sonic's body, he pretty much wears that like it's supposed to be armor, which in this case it actually is. It actually protects him from any attacks that hit him. I mean, he still does get damage in that, don't get me wrong, but it's not as much damage as you would hope. And then there's also the thing is that if you try to land a hit on him, he is extremely fast. Like, he's still fast enough to react to it accordingly and be able to either dodge or counter your attack. But there is one backdrop regarding that. He actually doesn't have sonic speed despite him now taking control of sonic's body he actually doesn't contain his speed and all of those other arms that he has sticking out of it he's not really able to run as fast with those it's not really able to work for him where he's able to walk on eight legs like he's a spider it's not exactly gonna work too well for him in that regard he's still not an easy one to beat but there is a few ways that you can but you would need to find a way to remove the Sonic body and get him out of there. Well, I guess technically getting Sonic out of there and removing both of them from each other so that Fatal is on his own 
and that he's vulnerable enough for you to try to attack him. You would also need to tear him apart. However, like I said, because of his speed, that is not an easy task. And the armor is another thing that prevents that. Now this next EXE is actually probably the most different out of all the other ones that we've covered so far, as well as the last one that will be covered right after this one. This one is probably the most sympathetic out of all the EXEs that I've seen, but they are also one of the most deranged ones and probably the most messed up one when it comes to their origins and what led them to the path that they were sent on. Because this EXE, unlike all the other ones where the only desire is just power and to take over the world, this one is a bit more personal. As a matter of fact, this one also was deceived. Because of the sadness and pain that they have felt, they would have been deceived by another entity that would have led them onto a path of revenge and other chaos against those who she believed had wronged her. This would be the story of a girl named Sarah, who would have eventually became the EXE known as Needle Mouse. Needle Mouse's story begins in the 1960s with a girl by the name of Sarah. Sarah would have been going to a party with her girlfriend named Lily to meet up with their friends by the name of Martin, Luther, who is probably the most important one in this story, and Michael. She meets all of, all of them at this party all f well, all five of them would have gone drunk. Like, all five of them would have got drunk that one night. And then something would have happened. It's believed that a physical altercation, possibly a fight while the five of them were drunk, which had led to one of them accidentally smashing a bottle across Sarah's head, killing her by accident. Once her four friends eventually came back to their senses and realized what they had done, they were afraid of what could possibly happen because they were afraid of what the consequences would be, but also felt bad about what they did to her. So what they decided to do was actually to drop her body into a lake, make sure that there was no trace of what they had did. There was no trace of their accidental crime, nor any trace of what had happened to Sarah, essentially making the entire thing unknown and possibly even forgotten about. Although, during this time, Sarah's spirit would have awoken inside of a black void that then remembered everything that had happened. Because over time, she would have gained whiplash, all these memories coming back to her about what had happened, and they would have been on repeat in her head over and over and over again, messing with her, making her believe that her friends had deliberately tried to kill her and got rid of her, leading to her going on a path of revenge since she wasn't really able to see her family, any of her other friends, or her girlfriend Lily ever again. As you would have expected, this would have led to Sarah spiraling into a state of other and complete madness. For the last 30 years, My computer's about to die. It's literally about to die. Suffered from her memories of basically what had happened to her. Eventually, Sega would have built, had their company built right over the same place that she would have been secretly buried. Her ghost would have eventually found its way into Sega's headquarters. Man, what is wrong with the audio? Was able to manipulate the code think, in order for think, her to possess uh, Sonic's body. Neil's game is audio. And also Mike was able to change the appearance of, times. of it because once she had taken up the form of Sonic, or at least resembling him in the game. Her body would have had purple quills. Sonic's quills would have been purple now, instead of their usual blue. His skin would have now been much more, or her in this Let's case, say, would yeah, have been more pale. I noticed a lot before. in this video the that his audio now been like, keeps on. Rather than just their usual white like I noticed a lot in this a video that his time, audio keeps on messing it to up. Be like, it keeps anything on. It keeps on. You wouldn't expect anything malicious out of it, but then like, I can still hear him, but it's like something wrong with the audio. And just how twisted she became once she became Needle Mouse. That would tell you that she's not anyone you should be taking lightly, and you're in for a world of trouble trying to face off of her and trying to reason with her. She would have started her grand plan into trying to capture her friends or former friends, I should like, say. Like I think. 
like uh, I think it's time for you to get a new mic. Like, like I think there's like something wrong with the mic because I think for the last 30 years, I'm not sure if it's the mic or the the settings or settings in the mic or the settings in the audio because you might need to change the audio settings or voice settings. Doctor Eggman keeps on like and tails. he's on Luther would have been the one that was stuck yeah, inside of Tails' body. He's on like and as you could see, would also be the one in to out. face off against Sarah throughout most of this. Especially since it seems like most of her quarrel has to do with Luther. It has to do with, deal with all of them, but Luther seems to be the biggest culprit specifically. As all three of the, all three of her former friends would have been captured. There would have been two other people who would have been researching about it, or at least would have found out about this whole situation going on after finding a disc related to Neil Mouse. This is starting to sound like the original Sonic EC story all over again, which yeah, like you won't be happy right there. I think the something is basically like your audio keeps on uh, yeah, cutting yeah, the, and now the, the idiot from the from the original EXE story, but this one's actually a smarter version of them. Don't worry in the modern day or at least when the modern day would have taken place during this story which is circa 2008 to 2009 tom as well as his best friend kyle would have actually found a game disc for sonic they would have found a disc for a sonic game that came out from the night came out in the 90s during a contest i'm gonna make Once sure i copy this it, title because i'm not gonna remember the, the title and you all know how this story is gonna go. They would have eventually found out about everything that was going on, though there was also a little mystery noise? that was going on about what exactly had happened to Tom's father. Because a long time ago, Tom's father, which is actually Luther, would have been trapped inside of the game. And eventually, when both Tom and Kyle were trying to figure out what to do, and when they found out about what was going on inside the game, Kyle would have eventually have been trapped inside the game and would have been placed inside of the body of Mecha Sonic, or at least this game's version of him. And here's another thing I got to tell you that also kind of makes this a little crazy because there is later in the series, Sarah actually ends up fighting Kyle. And here's the thing. Um, Kyle is actually the son of Lily. Huh? Kyle Henderson. Like, Lily would actually be the mother of Kyle. And if you think about this, even though they technically aren't married, but if Sarah was still alive and had got married to Lily, technically Kyle would have been her son. So in a weird way, you can kind of think of it, especially when you're looking at Kyle. Kyle kind of does look a little bit like Sarah, just without like the beady red eyes. A little bit like how Sarah did when she was still alive and when she was still a human. Like, so in a way, you could basically take this as that um, Sarah kind of unknowingly fought and possibly might have really, really badly injured or even did something worse to her own freaking son which is um that that's that's dark. that's like some uh i don't even know and after kyle would have been defeated sarah would have tried to to get outside the computer and try to capture tom but before tom could have been pulled inside of the computer and possibly killed with his soul being trapped inside of another body of another sign character Luther would have challenged Sarah in order to save Tom's life, leading to a showdown between the two of them, and both of them coming down to an understanding of each other, where Luther actually would have felt a little bit sympathetic. Like, he, he would have felt bad about what had happened, but also was telling Sarah that she had a chance to change all of this, like, to stop, until one voice actually would have been heard. Like, one voice would have actually been communicating to Sarah. Nobody knows who this disembodied voice is, but the entire time, this disembodied voice would have been motivating her to continue on with her pursuit her pursuit of revenge, which is what she's already been driven on this entire time. Which, it's not necessarily confirmed who this disembodied voice is, but 
most people, including me, believe that it's possibly an EC character. Probably one of the previous. As for who, I'm not entirely sure. It's quite possible that it might be the original Sonic EXE, so maybe Xenophanes. It could also be Lord X. It, it I've had to guess, probably Sonic. Sonic yet. We team. don't know for sure because nothing in the series, like during his first two seasons, and that's if it continues, really tells you about who it could actually be. Like, I did show a picture that showed Xenophane's earlier speaking with Sarah, but that's literally just speculation for if it actually is him. But it's quite possible that it might actually be him who's pulling all the strings. Even though Sarah is the main antagonist of this series, there is another force outside that we just don't see that's pretty much pulling all the strings and making her pretty much want to go on this pursuit of revenge that she's been thinking about for like the last 30 years of her unlife, you could say. Which makes her a pretty sympathetic character. And probably the best, re this, at least in my opinion, this is probably the best retelling of the Sonic EXE story. Although, not saying that Sonic EXE necessarily had to be like a sympathetic villain, because not all villains really need to be sympathetic. I do like sympathetic villains. Like, I do like having some villains that you can sympathize with. But there are also some villains where where they're just meant to be plain evil, and there are some that I do like that are like that. I mean, my computer's about to die. It's literally on its last breath. Somebody like Thanos from Marvel in the MCU, you can sympathize with him. You can sympathize with him a little bit in the comics, but Thanos has done so much. He's done more stuff, like more heinous crap in the comics that's kind of hard to. Like, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. Thanos is is a he's a cell block d level menace sarah might just be in that same league now because she has gone that she's become that deranged that she went out of her way like to to capture her friends especially in the finney gone and oh my god he didn't like, he did so many bad mess up he literally took on everybody the in the marvel comments the he literally took on to everybody in the, long, in the marvel comments and not to mention even capturing and possibly killing her own son or possibly her son and also trying to kill one of her friends sons before that said best friend oh. had had to basically had a fight to the death with her. Like, they had to duel her to, in order to save her. However, I think there is actually a bigger menace than Sarah here. Even though her story is actually a pretty interesting one, this next one is actually so twisted and demonic, I'm surprised this one actually happened. And let me ask you something. Did any of you, and, and be real with me here, did any of you actually expect for the most demonic out of all these EXEs to be freaking Dr. Eggman? Did you? Because that's basically what this next one is. Starved Eggman, which is probably one of the most messed up ones I've ever seen. In fact, uh, eh, this one would be a terrifying thing to see if this ever actually happened. Like, if Star Trek Man was real, he'd be a terrifying thing to see in real life. Not even a person. No. A thing. Like, like he's just terrifying. The way how Star Trek Man's story goes, it basically takes place after the events of Sonic 1, where his base of operations would have been destroyed. And as he was leaving, he would have found the remains of a charred flicky that wasn't able to get away in enough time and for whatever reason he got the idea to taste it he tasted the flicky and then after that something triggered in his mind something sparked in eggman's mind and what that was was for him to basically consume all of the animals in mobius Mobians, the normal animal, it didn't matter which. He didn't care. He would basically want to consume all of them. For whatever reason, Just he ate one bird, he ate one charred bird, and the next thing you know, 
it flipped the switch and he was like, okay, I want, I want to devour everything in this place. And it made him go completely psychotic. Cause you know what his next move was? His next move was to try to take out Sonic the Hedgehog. The one guy who's pretty much been, been his biggest foil. His worst enemy this entire time. The one who he wanted to go after for this. Like because of his new his new attitude about wanting to devour everything. He went after Sonic and created a robot that was specifically made to basically cook all of the Mobius. This robot would have been known as... Oh my Furby, god, that's which so is This story's version of Metal Sonic, but without him looking really anything like Sonic and not really looking... Well, Metal Sonic doesn't exactly look friendly, but he looks friendlier than uh, Furnace. Furnace, it looks like he is all biz business and would be absolutely terrifying to see. I'm pretty sure actually, he looks pretty badass in that. And yes, when me. Furnace had actually defeated Sonic, when Sonic crashed into Furnace when he got in front of him, it was loud enough for everybody to hear. It, it, it was just as loud as Chris Rock being slapped by, by Will Smith. Okay, I'm sorry for making that joke, but still... It, Everybody heard it. All of Sonic's friends heard it. And eventually, a lot of both Sonic I'm gonna and get a cop by many of his friends would have gone missing. Or at least, like, that, that's how this would have gone for everybody else, that they would have noticed they went missing. Sonic would have actually... Been, his, his remains would have been kept somewhere in Eggman's new base of operations, but he would occasionally devour him for... Like, devour bits and pieces for extra study. Ugh. And this is where Tails plays a part in this story because Tails would have actually been the main protagonist, the one who would have had to step up in order to defeat Eggman. And as you can see on screen, uh, Tails would have found out about this after all of his friends had went missing, and then he would have been greeted by the horrifying sight of what Eggman has become. It. it he doesn't even look like himself anymore. You know how the Joker says one bad day is enough to make anyone go mad? And this is the case for any hero or any villain. One bad day could probably make Sonic into Shadow. One bad day for Superman could possibly make him into that one version of him from Injustice or God dang Omni-Man, if not both, and Homelander. And... It, in Dr. Eggman's case, one, well, in this case for him, it wasn't entirely a bad day. It was a bad day for him in the case that his base of operations was destroyed. Not in the case that it basically allowed him to become a much more psychotic version of himself. He still has the same kind of intellect that he already did. It's just that now he's pretty much deranged. He's deranged and is, uh... Has an mm -hmm. insatiable hunger. Man, yeah, that face is creepy. That yeah. face is just so Yeah, the, the, this guy, this one is messed up. Jesus, that was a long ass video. When I mean long, that was long. That was like catching laugh at a hybrid long. Jesus. Okay, but not much. I know throughout the video I wasn't saying much, but I did find it very interesting about these Sonic ERC characters. Like, that there were. I thought there was. I thought there was literally like only one Sonic ERC character. Like, I did not know there was like so many. Sonic Yetzi characters. I did not know that. <laughs> I thought there was really only like one Sonic Yetzi character. Maybe like a Sonic Yetzi Tails and a Sonic a Tails Yetzi and a Knuckles Yetzi. But I did not and a, well an Amy Yetzi and an Eggman Yetzi. But I did not know there was so many Yetzi characters. Jesus. I'm glad but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but all the stuff I heard about what uh, Neil's gamer said in the video about these Sonic Yetzi characters, or 
whatever the names are, the menaces. These, yeah, they're pretty disturbing. I think the most disturbing one is probably uh, Eggman. The last one, the last one they showed, like that one, like his face is just all disturbing. And the one where I said, oh, what the, <laughs> that one. The one that looks cute on the inside, but then when you look at it, but he has the, the one with two personalities, one that's innocent and one that's this. One that's scary as fuck. <laughs> but anyway. That was a long one. Uh, <laughs> that was pretty long. That was like, what, 51 minutes? Jesus, that was long. Okay. And this is probably going to take a while to uh, process and upload. But, uh, eh. Anyway, this is going to go sign off. And remember, stay big. G fans, I guess. <laughs> well, stay big, Sonic fans. Or if they got that audience. You know what? Stay big, G fans. <laughs>